Hi and welcome to video 10 on this video series on annuities and this is part of topic 1 unit 4 general mathematics and we're talking about perpetuities and in this video following on from an example and a discussion in the last video I'm going to show you the mathematic f mathematical formulas involved in annuities so perp um, oh, In this video, I'm going to introduce to you the mathematical formulas involved in perpetuities. So let's have a look. For each compounding period, we want a perpetuity to be steady. So we want a perpetuity to maintain its value. So basically, we start with an amount, our P. It gains interest over that certain time period. And then we want to subtract a, a withdrawal, which we call D, to get back down to the end of the period A. And then we repeat this process. And of course, our D should be the same every time. So the growth is always the interest. And the interest is P times I. We earn whatever our original amount is times by the interest rate. And then it declines by a value of D because we withdraw that amount. So this leads to the formula that PI and D have to be the same length in our graph here, therefore D equals PI. So our withdrawal amounts must be equal to the original value times by the interest. And so we have A equals P, A equals P times 1 plus I minus D. I can do the calculations here to show that when we finally take off that original P value, I get PI equals D. And that gives us the way to find D is it's equal to PI. The way to find P the original amount is it's equal to the amount I withdraw divided by the interest rate and the way to find I is it's equal to the amount I withdraw divided by the total amount that I have in the fund and so these are three versions of the one formula just rearranged to find D, P or I in each case so let's have a look at an example So this example has three parts, and you can probably guess that those three parts are using the three formulas I've just provided. If I have $120,000 part A to invest in a perpetuity at a rate of 4.5% per annum, how much can I withdraw each year? So let's start with A here. P is the amount I'm investing, $120,000. I is the interest rate, which is 4.5% per annum, and it's each year, so I just have to divide it by 100 only. And so therefore D is equal to 120,000 times by 4.5 over 100. And that of course is equal to 5,400. So I could withdraw from this perpetuity $5,400 each year and it would maintain a steady value of $120,000. B. If I have $120,000 to invest in a perpetuity and would like to be able to withdraw $800 per month, what yearly interest rate will I need to attain? So in this one, I write down quickly what I know. P equals $120,000. D is equal to $800, but notice that it's $800 per month. And I, therefore, is equal to D divided by P, which in this case is 800 divided by 120,000 but I will be a monthly rate so just keep that in mind and we'll probably want to present to them a yearly rate because it says yearly here and so our monthly rate that we attain is 0.00666 repeater and we to get the yearly rate I as a per annum we do that number 0.0066 repeater times by 12 to make it yearly, times by 100 to make it a percentage, that's 1,000, and that's equal to 8%. And now let's look at C. If I'm planning to invest in a perpetuity at 6.4% per annum, compounding weekly, and would like to withdraw $600 per week, how much must I invest? 6.4% um, is our I. Our D is 800, and P, therefore, is equal to D over I, and that's equal to 800, divided by, now, a 6.4% here, 
is 6.4, but it's over 5,200 because we have 6.4%, so there's a percentage missing there, per annum, but it's compounding weekly. And I'd like to withdraw $600 per week. So we have to make sure that we have our time units correct. But in this case, it's going to give us a correct p-value. So I do that calculation, and p comes out as 487500 $487,500. If you invested that, at that interest rate, you would be able to withdraw $800 per week. So there we have an example and the formulas for calculating within the world of perpetuities. All the best.